If this video found you and you're recommended, you may have no experience with icebergs. To keep it short and get straight to the video, basically there are these iceberg charts on the internet that go over ideas of a certain topic, starting with most known facts and ideas of that topic, dropping all the way down to least known facts. However, this particular iceberg chart, which comes from user IAB1997, is organized a bit differently. Because this chart is about haunted house attractions, it has been ranked from least scary attractions to the last layer containing the most terrifying attractions you can visit. Just like all my other videos, there won't be any jump scares in this one, as well as no sudden shifts in the audio. So sit back and relax while I kick this one off by getting into layer one. So the first layer is going to be those family style haunts. These are the types of mazes and attractions you'd bring your kids to for a fun scare. Layer 1 is super tame and is mostly just dark rides with some haunts and local mazes thrown into it. For the most part, these are going to be more about the show rather than the actual scares. The Haunted Mansion and the Tower of Terror. If you don't know what these are somehow, you have to be living under a rock, but the Haunted Mansion and the Tower of Terror are both attractions that can be found at the Disneyland Resort in Southern California. Well, the Haunted Mansion can be found there. The Tower of Terror was unfortunately taken out for another attraction. I have another iceberg series that goes over the history of these abandoned attractions, so if that sounds right up your alley, go check it out after this video. When the Tower of Terror was up and running, it was a free fall style ride that was themed around the Twilight Zone. The ride would start in the hotel lobby and take you into an elevator vehicle. Once aboard, you'd fly up and down repeatedly in the elevator until reaching the climax of the ride at the top of the Tower of Terror soon plummeting back down to the very bottom of the entire ride. This one is well known for its amazing decor outside that really sets the mood when walking up to it. The Haunted Mansion is another classic ride at Disneyland. This experience starts right in the lobby of the ride, with the room having a pre-show where the room elongates as if it's getting taller and taller. After this room, you walk down the spooky hallway to your ride vehicle and are taken throughout the Haunted Mansion. One cool thing to note about this ride is the story that it takes you through. If you pay close attention at the beginning of the ride, you are actually being thrown off the side of a building and the rest of the ride is supposed to be your soul or spirit being taken on a tour of the Haunted Mansion where you will now reside forever. The ride used to even give out these death certificates back in its heyday. Even if you haven't gotten to ride these ones yourself, I would hope to god that you guys know about these entries as they are pretty popular attractions at Disneyland. Trauma Towers Viewers of mine that live in England may know about this entry. Trauma Towers was a funhouse haunted attraction that could be found at Blackpool Pleasure Beach in Northwest England. The original ride opened in the 1980s and was a walkthrough attraction similar to the mazes that can be found at today's Halloween Horror Nights. When it opened in 1980, it was actually split into two different attractions that eventually merged together in the late 1990s to become what we know today as the Trauma Towers. The original ride had some pretty generic horror decorations. From the videos I've seen of the attraction, it was very, very dark inside but wasn't too scary. There were a total of 15 walkthrough scenes that you would find your way through, starting off in the lobby where a bellboy would guide guests inside and then your tour of trauma towers would begin. Some notable rooms in this one were the garden room which was overgrown with plants that would swipe at the guests ankles as they passed, the dressing room which had a mirror that turned you into a goal when looking at it, and a games corridor where many monsters could be seen playing pool with floating pool balls. All of this would lead you to the grand finale of the entire attraction which took place in the baronial dining hall. Here guests would be sat down and the hall would turn into a Tagata style ride which if you don't know is just one of those spinning rides that are infamously known to be at city fairs. The interesting thing about this part of the ride though was that some small theatrics were thrown in such as water being released from the ceiling onto guests to simulate demons spitting on you. A very old entry indeed, and unfortunately one that you cannot visit anymore as it was closed in 2009. The reason for the closure was due to an other water attraction reportedly ruining the building by causing it to become too damp. Some of the scenes were salvaged and reused in the ghost train ride at the same amusement park, and in January of 2018, the entire building was in fact demolished. Leave a comment below if you got to enjoy this tame yet fun attraction found at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. House of Frankenstein This attraction can be found at Clifton Hill in Niagara Falls. 
The walkthrough house is obviously based off the famous movie monster Frankenstein. This attraction costs around $10 to get inside, while many of the other attractions around the House of Frankenstein have closed in recent times, the House of Frankenstein has managed to make it through the COVID struggle and can still be visited today. The walkthrough begins with a dark entrance with flashing lights. As you make your way through the house, you are met with a few cheap jump scares that aren't too frightening. I will say there was a fairly loud one in the middle of the hallway that actually scared me when I was listening to it for the first time. The cool thing about this one is that it offers something that I've never heard of being inside a haunted house like this. Here we have this section towards the middle of the maze where you can play one of those gunslinger games. Putting some quarters into the coin slot, you can begin taking shots at the mad scientist behind Frankenstein's creation. After completing the gunslinger game and moving on to the other sections, you guide your way through a hallway of mirrors and then seemingly into another dark hallway. This part also has two very cheap jump scares. I call them cheap jump scares because it's super obvious as to where the monster's gonna come out and even when they do come out, it's pretty slow. Most of the jump scares in this attraction are just these fake bodies slowly making their way towards the windows. Most of the time, I actually have to slow down jump scares for my audience, but these ones are just, well, they're slow enough as it is. Making your way further into the depths of the house, you start seeing other movie monster classics like this werewolf monster. As you make your way to the end of the maze, you see Frankenstein come to life and then you are led outside. This attraction is definitely one of the more tame and it makes sense for it to be so high on the iceberg as it isn't too frightening at all. It might be scary to a small child but should be a cakewalk for anyone above the age of 12. Backwoods Haunted House this is one of the better amateur Halloween yard haunts that has come to exist. Done straight out of one house owner's backyard in Burbank, California, with admission that was completely free. I say it was free because the haunted house cannot be visited anymore, as the last event for this maze was in October of 2018. However, when it was up and running, you could expect to see tons of detailed horror scenery, such as the ones that are being displayed on screen right now. It's especially impressive when you consider the fact that this is basically all done by one guy and a small team of his. There isn't a big story to this one like many of the others down on the list, but starting at the front entrance, a creature with a toxic gas mask scares you as you walk into the backwoods. Here you see monsters such as this dapper rhino, this crazy bunny creature, and other various deformed characters. This one has the dark scenery down, but it does fall a bit short when it comes to actual scares. Watching the entire walkthrough myself, there doesn't seem to be any part that really tries to jump scare you. It's also a bit unclear what the theme is here, but as you can see from the footage yourself, it's all pretty well decorated. The best thing about this house has to be all of the little details that were put in, but again, it's not really that scary. But it is one of the most beautifully done sets that is on this list, and especially for coming out of one person's backyard. Prism Haunted House This is another haunted house that is done by a local homeowner in Mission Viejo, California. Prism Haunted House is still up and running today out of the same exact location. The story in this haunted house is fairly simple. You are a visitor that has come to see Dr. Sanguine's laboratory and all the specimens that he has inside. Now this attraction has gone through some major changes since it came out in 2018. The original attraction was your classic walkthrough style hunt, but was forced to change due to COVID hitting in 2020. Rather than close it down like many other haunts did during that time, the creator behind Prism steered straight into the skid and came out with an open outdoor haunt experience that you can still visit in 2021. The 2021 experience has a short but still scary walkthrough maze that takes you into the lab of Dr. Sanguine, just like in the 2018 and 2019 experience. Only this time, there are more barriers between you and the creatures due to COVID reasons. From the pictures you can see on screen, they really stepped it up from the previous years, and the owners have come out saying that there was actually a lot more planned for 2021, but due to the city giving them a lot of COVID restrictions, they were forced to cut out more than half of what they originally had planned. Some neat parts of this attraction include the outside tent area that looks like a quarantine tunnel, a creature that creates sparks on this chain link fence by banging this pan against it, and many other futuristic looking tech that really sets the scene for the haunt you are in for. Again, another beautifully done set that really makes you feel like you've infiltrated someone's lab. Hopefully the team behind Prism comes back even stronger next year when the restrictions get loosened. Rotten Apple 907 
Rotten Apple 907 is a pretty unique entry on this list because their haunted walkthrough maze changes themes every single year. This one has been going on for a total of 30 years starting in the 1990s. It originally started off as an attraction for a children's birthday party, but as we can see now, it's evolved into much more than just that. Each year during Halloween, the owners decorate their home in Burbank and transform it into one of the more creative haunts in California. Now rather than just pick one single year and go through the walkthrough, I thought I'd share a bunch of my favorites that they've done over the years. In 2014, they did what they called the House of Fun. This iteration was very well themed around clowns, carnivals, and fun houses. I think each year they've gotten a lot more creative and detailed with their haunts. For example, their 2019 haunt was all themed around underwater and submarine voyages, which sounds bad on paper, but man did they knock this one out of the park. From the moment you step in, the live actors would guide you through and make you feel as though you had just walked into a nightmare of a ship that is being taken over by a monstrous octopus. There are other unique incarnations such as their 2017 edition, which was dubbed the Portal, in which you would traverse from one dimension into another one that was hellish and dark. Whatever the theme is, you can expect very experienced live actors, very well thought out jump scares, and overall, a good time with any of the Rotten Apple haunts. This one is free to enter and any donations made are given to charity by the owners. This haunt has been a walkthrough experience each year, excluding 2020, where they opted for an outdoor show due to COVID restrictions. But even in 2021, Rotten Apple 907 has come back full force with their Evil in London fog attraction. If you live near Burbank, go check this one out next Halloween as it's definitely one of the more creative and fun haunts to visit. The last day for this haunt ends on October 31st and starts up again in October of the following year. This actually brings us to Layer 2. Layer 2 consists entirely of so-called scream parks. That is, those amusement parks or other public events that usually take place around Halloween. These are for older kids like 12 and up. These haunts are the traditional type of haunts you'd expect from a list like this that include creepy hayrides, asylums, and all around a higher level of jump scares. Halloween Horror Nights, Fright Fest, Not Scary Farm, and Hollow Weekends. I'm gonna bunch all of these up together because I assume if you're watching this then you've at the very least heard of all these places if not visited them yourself. These haunts come every single October at four separate amusement parks in California. Knott's Berry Farm turning into Not Scary Farm, Six Flags hosting Fright Fest, Universal Studios expanding into Halloween Horror Nights, and Cedar Point becoming Hollow Weekends. All four of these consist of the same exact experience with you walking around the amusement park with monsters and creatures scaring you as you make your way down to each ride. The only big changes that come with each of these is that some of your favorite rides change into these haunted maze attractions that mostly remain the same each year with some new interactive mazes coming along every so often. Now the level of scariness and horror between these four parks vary depending on who you ask. Some people believe that Horror Nights is the scariest while others think it's Knott's, Fright Fest, or Cedar Point. Now instead of ending it off here, I wanted to share some of the unique attractions that each of these haunts offers that the others don't. At Halloween Horror Nights, one of the most unique attractions from my experience is the Terror Tram. Each year, Universal changes the regular tram tour into this terror and horror themed tour. The cool thing that this one offers is that halfway through your tour, you are kicked off of the tram and you're forced to make your way through the Universal Studio backlots on foot. Each year has a special theme with this year being based on the purge. However, most of the jump scares and walkthrough parts remain mostly the same with a simple reskin. Not Scary Farm has some pretty unique mazes like the Special Ops Maze. This maze starts you off with a laser tag style gun and as you make your way through the maze, you shoot at the monsters to keep them off of you. Definitely one of the more creative mazes that can be found at all of these parks. Over at Fright Fest, we have the Condemned Maze, which is one of the best mazes that this place offers. The 2018 version at least. This one featured very neat effects and set pieces like this wall of hands, followed by a section where you are forced to walk in between the walls of the house, where actors jump scare you through drop panels, all the while there is nothing you can do but accept it. Unfortunately, this one was changed due to COVID restrictions and now my recommendation would most likely be everyone's favorite, which is the neon colored maze, Sewer of Souls, which in 2021 is now called 
Vault 666. Cedar Point's main showstopper during Halloween is their Freak Show Haunted Maze, which is very reminiscent of the American Horror Story Freak Show. All four of these parks mostly offer the same experience in terms of scares. Going to any of these parks, you can expect to have monsters scare you as you walk through the park and can expect many maze attractions as well as some of their main roller coaster attractions being open still. Night Terror's Haunted House Now unfortunately, there doesn't exist any walkthrough videos of the haunts at this place, but there does exist promotional videos made by the creators of this haunt that I will have playing in the background. Night Terror's Haunted Farm is a yearly attraction that takes place in October on the weekends. Similar to Rotten Apple, they change their theme each year, offering three different types of maze walkthroughs to experience. This year they have The Hive, The Maze Mayhem, and Spellbound The Nightmare Realm. Again, aside from the promotional videos, there isn't too much information on this one aside from visiting it myself, but seeing as I don't live in New York, I am unable to do so. However, this attraction seems to have the same theming and scares comparable to that of Halloween Horror Night style mazes. If you've been to this attraction yourself, please feel free to leave a comment below as I'd love to make a follow-up video detailing whatever I missed. This will bring us to Layer 3. Layer 3 is entirely composed of the more mainstream big haunts that you may have seen covered on the news before. These are the larger walkthrough mazes that have a lot higher production value, better lighting, immersive sets, as well as better and more high-tech jump scares. These are going to be those haunts that your late teenagers and up would be seen frequenting. Nothing too out there, just your run-of-the-mill haunts by today's standards. Bates Motel The Bates Motel can be found in Glen Mills, Pennsylvania. As the name suggests, this haunt will take you on a full walkthrough of the Bates Motel, starting at the front of the motel, going through to the backyard, through a greenhouse, and finally into the main house that everyone knows about. This attraction is run by a great team that knows how to put a good maze together. This one isn't nearly as invasive as the other ones on the list, but the jump scares are placed very well and in spots you wouldn't expect, such as people coming out from the top of the ceiling. Also, it's important to note, although it's fairly obvious, this footage isn't what you would see if you went there yourself. It's a much, much darker experience in person. The footage you're viewing is actually in night vision. I would hope everyone knows that, but I just wanted to say that just to get it out there. This is definitely a step up from the previous tier in terms of scariness, but it's not too far ahead of them. The actors do a fantastic job of playing their part in the hotel, especially during parts like this. There is also a great use of special effects in this attraction, such as the part with the floating chair or this big Venus flytrap opening revealing a person being eaten alive. A pretty cool gem that you can visit today as it's still open as of 2021. The 13th Floor The 13th Floor is based in Denver, Colorado and is still running to this day. This haunt starts off with you taking an elevator ride down to the 13th Floor. This floor is another world on its own as it's jam-packed with big monstrosities that have the power to rip people in half, big water scenes with giant crocodiles, and honestly some pretty creative set design. The animatronics here honestly look a lot better than most on the list. Most of the other attractions down on the list have fairly cheap looking animatronics, but I think that these look and act pretty lifelike. This isn't to say that the attraction isn't without its faults, the one complaint that I sort of agree with is that the effects are very reminiscent of what you'd find at your local fair, such as this spinning room or this hallway of mirrors. I'll agree with the spinning room, but I think the mirror maze, at least the way it's done here, is a pretty seamless way of including it. I also feel like this haunt lets you get super up close and personal with a lot of the animatronics, which not many other places allow. This is usually out of fear of people breaking them, but nonetheless, I think the redeeming quality of the 13th floor is the world that it manages to create. Taking you down to the mystical 13th floor, seeing tons of abominations and creatures that have no business existing. So while it's not the scariest attraction on here, it's definitely one of the more creative ones. Super Scary Labyrinth of Fear This attraction can be found in Japan at the amusement park known as Fuji Q Highland. The Labyrinth of Fear is one of Japan's most infamous haunted houses. The entire attraction is just a big walkthrough of an insane asylum, and it's pretty damn real. Walking inside will make you feel as though you are walking straight into an actual insane asylum. The entire building is also equipped with the horror essentials, such as uncomfortably empty halls, 
faint bleaking lights straight out of a horror movie, and some of the most realistic props that I've ever seen. I mean, this actually looks like a real person laying down. Now unlike most of the other items on the iceberg, this one doesn't rely on sheer jump scares to achieve a reaction. Instead, most of the attraction is left to your imagination. You walk through the empty and seemingly abandoned insane asylum, seeing the numerous dead bodies that feel like they will jump out at any second. Now there are some jump scares throughout the attraction, most notably there are times where the live actors dressed in these asylum scrubs will chase you down the hallways to the next part of the attraction. Some important fun facts about this one is that you aren't allowed to go inside alone. Now I've been led to believe that the reason you can't go in alone is due to cultural reasons, but I feel like it's just a way to ensure that they make money. From the information I found online, you have to go with at least two people in a group together, but some videos even talk about how it's actually groups of four. You shouldn't go to this haunted house expecting to be jump scared constantly. Instead, this one is meant to create a realistic atmosphere that makes you want to leave the moments you walk in. The Darkness The Darkness is a haunted house that can be found in St. Louis, Missouri. It is part of an entire slew of attractions spanning from six haunted houses and a mini golf course with the main attraction being the Darkness Haunted House walkthrough, which is what I will be focusing on during this section. Nothing about this one stuck out to me like the others, but it serves as a good example of a mainstream haunt. It has great set design, higher quality scares and animatronics, as well as a very spooky and demonic atmosphere. There are tons of live actors throughout the haunt that really get into character, more so than what you'd find at Halloween Horror Nights or Not Scary Farm. The sheer amount of actual props and animatronics on this haunt is pretty astonishing, not to mention the animation that they have playing throughout the attraction. It is known to be one of the larger haunts on the list. Walking through it at a normal pace would take you around 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how slow you walk. The production quality is definitely there with this haunt and is known as one of the best mainstream haunts you can go to as of today. Although it's fairly generic in terms of the theme, it still serves as a great example of what a good haunt should be. This will bring us to Layer 4. Layer 4 is where we start getting into the higher shock value haunts. These attractions are very similar to the walkthrough mazes in Layer 3, but contain more intense subject matter, graphic practical effects, and in general are a lot more gory and scary than what we've seen already. You most likely won't be taking any children to these, and maybe not even some teenagers. Dent Schoolhouse In Cincinnati, Ohio, you may find yourself visiting the Dent Schoolhouse Haunted Attraction. This one is really unique because it actually takes place at a real schoolhouse that closed down back in the 1950s. The original school opened its doors up for the first time in 1894, but unfortunately was closed down during the 1950s. There is an urban legend behind the closure that gave inspiration for the haunted house that we see today. The legend is that a janitor named Charlie McFree went on a killing spree on the students, even taking some of the children by force and locking them down in the school's basement. This was the story that has been told as the reason for the school's closure. The attraction itself does a very good job of bringing this urban legend to life. It starts you off at the top of the school, slowly leading you down into the catacomb-like basement. Down here in the basement, you'll be met with tons of dead bodies hanging from the ceiling, actors revealing themselves from seemingly nowhere, and even a live exorcism. This one is a very high quality maze just for the sheer fact that you are in an actual school. All the old decrepitness of the schoolhouse is real from the broken stone walls to the cobwebs. All of this in tandem with the horrific looking creatures and actors make this attraction an absolute must. You have your classic jump scares with panels dropping down along with newer style scares like this huge rat that pops out of this wall, fully equipped with sounds and air blowing out of it. There's even a section in the bottom of the basement that looks exactly like the catacombs of Paris. Now I'm only touching on a handful of scenes they have at this location as there are honestly tons of great effects and moments that this one manages to pull off. The thing that draws people into this one is the lack of time to cool down. There isn't much time to breathe throughout the maze and going to it today, you can expect to be scared each time you turn a corner. Perdition Home The Perdition Home is a now closed haunt that used to be open in Yorba Linda, California. The Perdition Home, when it was up and running, was done out of these two houses. Similar to the Rotten Apple attraction, they change up the theme each year. 
But what doesn't change is the raw, gruesome nature of the Perdition Home Haunt. Walking into one of these haunts back when they were open, you'd be met with gruesome depictions of cut up bodies, bound and gagged victims, and just tons of heavily gory scenes. One of the best years was when they did a theme around serial killers. Each room of the home was dedicated to one serial killer, depicting scenes in the way that the real serial killers would murder their victims. This is one of the better at-home haunts, and while it doesn't use any fancy animatronics or the greatest actors, it instead relies on raw fear from stepping into a gory home with nothing but your footsteps to be heard. Each attraction that popped up over the years was painstakingly built, with the production of the attraction being displayed on the owner's YouTube channel of the same name. The best part of this is also it being completely free. Awesome to see some true horror fans that do this just for the love of it and nothing more. Unfortunately, in 2019, they had to stop doing the attraction due to some personal life issues getting in the way and also some city problems causing them to not be able to do the attraction. Then with COVID hitting in 2020, it pretty much killed off the attraction as of late. However, they have started another similar haunt in 2021 that is now based out of Chino, California. So if you want to experience this specific style of haunt for yourself, drive yourself over to the Dark Harvest located in Chino, California. House of Shock The House of Shock can be found in Elmwood, Louisiana. This attraction has been running for around 25 years, with that streak ending in 2018 with the House of Shock closing for good. The original ride doesn't have much information as to what goes on inside, and the only footage I've been able to find is basically pitch black. From what I was able to gather reading Yelp reviews, Reddit posts, and YouTube comments, the maze was your basic haunted attraction, but the big twist here was the amount of actors on set. Apparently, there were tons upon tons of live actors that it wasn't uncommon for the actors to walk outside of the attraction to scare guests just because of the sheer amounts that were already inside the actual attraction. As for what goes on inside, picture your typical Halloween horror maze, only this time the actors were a lot more experienced. The reason that this is important is because people have claimed that the actors were so good that they were able to read the guests a lot better and scare them accordingly, getting the timing just at the right moment, scaring tons of people when they least expected it. The one thing that is well documented is the live performance that would go on before the attraction would open. There was a live freak show that would happen when the attraction would open for the night with reoccurring shows happening throughout the rest of the evening. The stuff that the people would do during this performance was pretty insane. I mean, just look at this guy, he's a freaking animal. The stage show was meant to get people mentally prepared for what they had in store for them. But as I said before, there wasn't too much information on it as even people that went inside the attraction refrained from speaking of their experience because they didn't want to spoil any surprises. The House of Shock did in fact close in 2018, but as of 2021, there is a new attraction in the same exact location called the New Orleans Nightmare, which, although it has a different name, appears to be the same exact haunt. The Haunted Hoochie If you're ever in Pataskala, Ohio, you may find yourself at the Haunted Hoochie. As the name would suggest, the main draw for this one is the scantily dressed zombie monster woman that can be found throughout the maze. The Haunted Hoochie is well known for the wild and crazy scenes that they put on throughout the maze. There are two major scenes I wanted to talk about. One of them I will show on screen because there's actually footage of it, but the first scene I wanted to talk about is a new addition to the 2021 attraction. In the 2021 iteration of the Haunted Hoochie, there is a depiction of male genitalia being cut off during the attraction. The way it was described to me is you walk into a room that has a man bare butt sitting on a chair. Then a woman hits a light switch, revealing his, you know what, hanging below the chair. She then proceeds to cut them off and abuse the audience with said item. Pretty freaking wild if you ask me. Now the other showstopper that this attraction has is the world's nastiest rectal exam. What you're watching is the actual scene that you would see at this attraction if you went today. These two scenes really set the tone for how this haunt will go. And honestly, the entire maze is just jam-packed with noise, flashing lights, with something constantly happening in your field of view. I'll leave the rest to your imagination because this is one of the few that I firmly believe you should experience yourself. Penhurst Asylum This haunt is set inside an actual insane asylum. 
You may have seen this attraction featured on BuzzFeed Unsolved. It's located in Chester County in Pennsylvania. The main attraction that everyone visits this location for is the Penhurst Asylum Maze, but they do have two other mazes known as the Morgue and the Tunnels. They also offer paranormal investigation tickets if that's your kind of thing. The Penhurst Asylum Maze is the main draw though. This is the first one on the list where the actors get touchy. And I mean really, really touchy. I'm not sure if COVID has had any effect on how this one is run, but before COVID, going to this attraction meant you were in for a 30 minute experience full of people screaming in your face, constant commotion, and just overall a loud and busy ordeal. Of all the ones on the list, this is also very different in terms of the jump scares. You won't find your typical jump scares with boards falling down and actors popping out. Instead, you will see an actor in one spot, then seconds later, they will somehow be right in front of you, screaming their head off. That's basically what you can expect from most of this attraction. The actors just get right in your face, begin touching you, and don't really do much else besides that throughout the entire thing. Not much else needs to be said for this one. Let's move on. This brings us to layer 5. Layer 5 is where we get to the real hardcore haunts that push your mental and physical boundaries a lot further. These are the haunts that contain at least a few controversial elements along with the actors being able to physically touch you, isolate you, enclose you in tight spaces, and deprive you of your senses during your experience. The haunts here also start having safe words due to their extreme nature. Alone. So this one required a ton of research because there was almost no well-documented information on this attraction. Even the website is pretty obscure with little to no information about the haunted house itself. Originally, I wasn't going to say much for this entry, but luckily I was able to get in touch with an individual that did the alone experience himself. Before I go on about the alone experience, I wanted to give a well-deserved shout out to this individual. Here is their Instagram and Twitter, which can be found at DreamscapeFX. This individual's company is based out of LA, where he creates masks, props, miniatures, and all sorts of creature suits for TV and theatrical productions. They have a half-off deal for these alien chestburster props that look like they came straight out of the movie. So go check those out, as the links will be found in the description below. Now based on the information from the interview, it's very clear that the Alone Experience is unlike any of the other attractions on this iceberg. The Alone Experience is advertised as an existential haunt, and the way that it was described to me was it being a very soul-searching experience. While many of the other haunts rely on jump scares, creepy decor, and scary live actors, the Alone Experience utilizes a very empty and dreamlike ambiance as well as experienced live actors to force you to do some self-reflection. Before I go into some of the details regarding this specific individual's experience, it's important to note that each year for this attraction is different and each experience itself is also a little bit different. So even if you've attended the Alone Haunt, you may have had an entirely different experience depending on the year that you went. So, what does going to the Alone experience entail? Well, first, you have to go onto the Alone website to let them know that you would like to do the experience. You would then be told a date and time to be ready for the haunt. I will now go over this specific person's experience. So, he was told to be ready for the haunt at 10pm. An hour or so before the agreed upon time, he received a text message on where to drive to. The location was kept a secret until the day of, and as it was told to me, the only way you were able to tell that you were at the right location was because of a bright neon triangle sign that signified you were at the right spot. In this particular story with the person I interviewed, the location for the alone event was found in a dark alleyway in the fashion district of Los Angeles. Now keep in mind, this specific part of LA is a pretty shady area, and not only was it around 10 o'clock at night, but you'd have to go to this experience alone. So, as you made your way down the dark alleyway to the front door, you'd already be thinking of your poor life decisions as the thought of you being kidnapped runs through your head. Once you reach the end of the alleyway, you would see a table with two actresses in white robes sitting down. 
they would then hand you a waiver to sign which would allow you to be permitted into the experience. Now the person I interviewed was only able to recall his favorite parts of this specific time with the alone haunt, so I'm only able to go over some of the situations that this individual found himself in as opposed to going over a start to finish experience. One specific scenario that he was put in involved him crawling through a hole made of wood and emerging into a room that looked like a restaurant. This room had tons of booths, with a blue light being cast upon the entire scene. As you would emerge from the wooden hole, you would climb out onto one of the booths with an actress sitting on the other side of the table. As you reveled in this dreamlike ambiance for a few moments, just staring directly at the woman across from you, the actress would then suddenly grab you, shaking you about, and guide you to the next part of the experience. Now, this is where things get kind of cool and also a little bit crazy, so instead of trying to describe it myself, I'll let the victim take it from here. You know, staring at you, and then uh, eventually, like, she just like kind of like freaks out and grabs you and like pulls you around and like leads you to another room. There's another room after that, or if there was, that was the e like the exit. Yeah. Dude, with with that first year, like did this crazy thing where, well, that, the first leave, you go out into like another, you go out into the alley, like you literally leave the building, right? And this gets over, basically, because you're outside. Yeah. It's done. You're walking down the alley. And then this guy, this homeless guy, you know, like just all disheveled, uh, dirty, uh, wearing like an overcoat, runs up, pins you against the wall, and says like, uh, Enola has you. Um, uh, go in the first door on the right. What the? Uh... Yeah. So <laughs> he, he leaves you, and uh, you go into the next door on the right, and you're back in the whole experience again in this other building. The entire alone haunt is full of crazy scenarios like this. Most of the experience is meant to make you doubt reality and force you into an almost dreamlike coma where you can't tell if you are dreaming or not because of how surreal everything feels. People besides the one that I interviewed have described the haunt as an almost magical experience unlike anything they've ever done before. Now from what I've said, it sounds like this is going to be a very pleasant and nice time, but remember, this is in layer 5 for a reason. You can still expect to be pushed around, forced into random unwanted scenarios, and overall, taken advantage of. Even with that said though, this event is not your typical extreme haunt, and everything that is done in this attraction should be seen as intentional, with the actors purposely throwing you around in order to get the point of this attraction across. Going to this haunt, you can expect to be brought to your mental limits as you will be forced out of your comfort zone into the inner depths of your mind that you never even thought were there. Through nostalgic and dreamlike scenarios, the alone staff is able to guide you on your adventure of challenging your very existence. From taking you to thoughts of existential dread to making you feel like everything will be okay, the alone experience is meant to take you out of your boring daily routine and allow you to realize how precious the life you've been given truly is. Sorry if this explanation is a bit vague, I tried my best to get the information as detailed as possible, but as said before, I was only able to interview one single person, but hopefully I was able to shed some light on this mysterious attraction. Moving on. Zombie Joe's Underground Theater Zombie Joe's Underground Theater is located in Hollywood, California. This is another not super well-known attraction that doesn't really have any live footage. But the attraction is said to begin with a very dark and narrow maze, with the walls being completely black and getting more narrow as you make your way through. As you walk further into the maze, you go inside of an actual theater and wait until everyone fills up the empty space. Once inside and they're ready to go, boom! You begin seeing live actors putting on a scene completely naked. Full frontal nudity is no stranger to this attraction and it's said that the actors are super committed to these scenes that they do. Some describe what goes on here as performance art while others believe it's straight up disgusting. I guess to each their own, but tons of people tend to agree that this place leans more on the creepy side rather than raw scares. 
an artistic window into the dimension of horror, if you will. The only scene I've been able to hear talked about is a scene involving an Aztec ritual, but for the most part, people say that this isn't your typical haunt, and that 90% of the event is you watching actors perform horror skits in front of you, all the while there are actors walking around scaring you like your typical haunt. Nightmares Fear Factory Nightmares Fear Factory can be found at Niagara Falls in Ontario. This one seems to be a hit or miss for most people. The entire attraction is basically just complete darkness with a few red lights on the ceiling to guide you through the maze. All the while, there are sudden noises and actors that touch you. The reason that this is hit or miss depends on the actors as well as your fear of the dark. If you aren't afraid of the dark or the unknown, then this attraction won't really do much for you. You are better off going to a typical jump scare style haunt. Another big factor is the actors themselves. There have been several reviews where people express that the actors didn't really try to scare them at all, and in some cases, the guests actually scared the actors. Now if all goes well, the actors do their job, and you are scared of the dark, this is an intense attraction that plays off of your fear of the dark pretty darn well. I will say that the later entries down on the list do a much better job of scaring you with darkness, but this is still a fun attraction that is fairly cheap for what you get to experience. This brings us to Layer 6. Layer 6 is full of your entry level extreme haunts. This is where the horror in these haunts become borderline masochistic. From physical restraint, to mild electric shock, to live insects and sensory deprivation, you name it and it's probably allowed. These all have 18 plus and over restrictions as well as waivers and safe words. I must warn you, everything from here on out might have some pretty gory visuals, so if you don't want to see people with blood on their face or getting abused, I recommend stopping the video now. If you watch this after, I don't want to see any comments saying that I didn't warn you because I did. Let's get into layer 6. Tension Experience The tension experience isn't your typical haunt where people come out of nowhere and scare you. No, 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 no. This one isn't even a haunt. Like the name suggests, it's an experience. The entire thing reads like a huge ARG, which if you don't know, stands for an alternate reality game. I'm not going to explain it too in depth here, but if you must know, go watch one of my other Icebreak videos as they heavily delve into these types of games. The general idea behind this though is that the experience feels very, very real. So much so that you actually begin to think that what you're doing involves your real life actions. This particular experience starts with you getting indoctrinated into the group. The way in which you do this is by solving puzzles through their websites and communicating with the company through your email. Once you're able to contact someone within the tension experience, you will receive an email detailing where to meet and at what time. Going to whatever location they name will start the haunt. Now everyone's experience from this point on is almost completely different. But one thing that has remained the same is that almost every person I have read that has gone through this experience always says that they start off in a random location and are picked up by the company. To ensure that they have the right person, they will give you a courtesy call and make you identify yourself by raising your hand or something so that they can be sure that whoever they're looking at is the right person that they emailed. Once they know they've got the right person, they take you away for the haunt. Here is where things divulge into different paths. Some have detailed that they were taken into a room and interrogated by a mystery figure. Some explain that they were brought to another room and told to dance with some live actors. Everyone's experience seems to be almost completely different and entirely personal. Now you're probably wondering what the hell is the point of all this if it's not really that scary? Well, that's just the thing. No one really knows. Even people that have done the experience don't truly understand why they were told to do the things that they did, and no one knows how or why the company is still getting people to go through the experience today. Usually ARGs like this have some sort of end goal if they go on this long, but not this one. If anyone knows more about the tension experience, I'd love to see some information on it. So make sure to comment below if you're one of the lucky few that got to attend this haunt. Gates of Hell this is one of the more disturbing entries on the list, and basically from this point on, most of the entries are very similar in shock value. The Freakling Brothers Gates of Hell is a masochistic type of experience that can be found in Las Vegas, Nevada. Before going into this attraction, you must sign a waiver because of all the wild things that go on inside. Walking through this haunt, you can expect to be shoved, 
abused, electrocuted, like a lot. <laughs> and the electric shocks they send are no joke. It's not like those gum packs you'd use on your friend as a prank. I'm talking like real electricity that actually hurts. This is what they are most known for as many people have reported poor experiences due to the electrocutions, but there are other crazy scenes that happen there as well. Such as a firing squad scene that makes you feel as though you're going to be shot to death. There is also a suicide part where a man literally commits suicide in front of you. Obviously it's all fake and all fun and games, but a lot of the imagery that takes place inside of the gates of hell is done very realistically, and if you go to this yourself, expect to be basically abused and tortured the entire time. This is truly a masochist dream, but things only get worse from here on out as you'll see with the next entries down on the list. The 17th Door the 17th door is located in Fullerton, California and is one of the most infamous haunts that people know of. This one definitely raises the stakes in terms of erotic visuals, masochistic acts, and how touchy the actors can get with you. It's called the 17th door because the entire experience takes you through 17 rooms with the number of each room being labeled as you make your way through. You are told before going in to not touch the actors but they can touch you and to also follow whatever you are told to do. Some of the rooms involve you being suffocated for 20 seconds, being forced to crawl through spaces that get smaller, pinning you to the ground, being shot with pellets while blindfolded, and tons of parts where you get physically shocked. The neat thing about this experience that not many other experiences do is that they have a safe word, but it's not like every other haunt's safe word. Usually in other haunted houses, once you say the safe word, you are kicked out of the entire attraction. However, at the 17th door, the safe word, which is the word mercy, will get you out of one single room. So if you can't handle one specific area, but you can handle the other 16, they will let you skip just that one room or however many rooms you think you can't handle. There is also a story to this place as well. The story is that you get into this jail and are slowly making your way through to the end where you plan your escape and leave the prison. You are guided by the prison inmates to each room and the next part of the story. If you go to the 17th door, expect to get wet, pushed around, hit with random objects, and electrocuted every now and again. I will say though, this is not nearly as intense as some of the other entries down on the list but it is a great introductory haunt into these types of masochistic experiences. If you thought layer 6 was bad, well just you wait for what's in layer 7. In layer 7, we now transition from borderline masochistic to basically torture. These are your advanced extreme haunts. Most of these have secret locations and are meant for people that want to push their mental and physical health to the limit. You may be asked about your worst fears before going to any of these attractions. You will also basically be abused for the entirety of the attraction's runtime. There are also 18 plus, have waivers, safe words, and well, you get the whole thing. Let's go ahead and talk about the first item, Blackout. Blackout is a haunt located in New York, New York. This one has tons of rules that must be followed at all times. The first of which is you are required to walk through the entire attraction alone. Even if you come in a group, they will separate you from your group and isolate you all alone. You are not to touch the actors, speak or touch the walls unless instructed to do so, and are required to do exactly as you're told. You are given a safe word in this one which ironically enough happens to be the word safety. Now that you know the rules. What exactly can you expect when attending Blackout in New York? The most well-known scenes include being waterboarded, with them placing a bag over your head and continuously pouring water on your face to make it harder to breathe. You can also expect other bodily fluids to project onto you, such as vomit and even urine. There's even a specific story where one of the persons in the haunt threw up into a toilet and another guest was required to reach their hand into said toilet to retrieve a key to get to the next part of the haunt. Aside from these outlandish acts, there are other parts that play off of your basic fears, such as rooms going pitch black with tons of sensory deprivation going on, as well as making you strip completely naked in some cases just to fuck with you mentally. A lot of what goes on here is mentally damaging such as one section where they pretend to staple you with a staple gun. The gun is in fact empty, 
but they still press it up to you and push down until it makes the staple noise insinuating that they are in fact stapling your body. Now with all of this said, you are probably expecting to come out of here barely alive, but most people make it through the haunt with only a few bruises that tell of how their evening went. Cracked Cracked is an experience that has no specific location but can be found in the UK. The company that runs it is known as Faceless Ventures, and man oh man is this one quite the experience. Once you're all signed up, you are given a location and time to meet at, much like that of the alone experience. Once there, a van will pull up, kidnap you, and take you to an undisclosed location where the actual haunt begins. The cracked survival experience can involve being waterboarded, forced to stand in stress positions for long periods of time, trapped in tight spaces or coffins with bugs, and even these so-called eating challenges where they put disgusting things in your mouth just to see if you're able to stomach it. The story on this one follows the leader of a cult-like figure known as Blake. You are told that everything you're doing during the experience is done to impress their leader Blake. Now the entire attraction is said to run for over six hours. Six hours of non-stop abuse where you're basically thrown around and forced to do things that you wouldn't normally do. There is a safe word with this one as well, as there should be with extreme haunts like this, and is definitely one of the more personal haunts. It has been said that the team might even reach out to you multiple times before you get there, just so they can gain more information on you to add that personal touch to your experience. This one has a lot more scenes than what I've described here, but the one word I'd use to describe the entire experience is brutal. Dead of Night There doesn't seem to be any real information on this one besides from this video back in 2013. It appears that this attraction has been shut down but apparently took place somewhere in New York. One of the comments explained that the place went under due to the extreme lengths that the actors would go to, physically pinning people down and yelling at them, all without a safe word. From the video, it looks like your typical masochistic haunt with you being forced to do things such as being put into tight spaces, being gagged and picked up, taken places in body bags, and overall just treated like a piece of meat. You could even see some of the people being placed into these big white boxes and taken elsewhere. Now depending on your view of these attractions, you may be pleased to know that it's closed. As for when it closed, I have actually no idea as the Facebook and even the website for the haunt are completely dead. Feel free to comment below if you have any more information regarding this specific haunt. Stag This attraction is said by the creator to be inspired by the other attraction known as Blackout. When the original experience was up and running, you could find it in Saginaw, Michigan. Now with Stag, you can expect much of the same masochistic acts, being stripped naked, pushed around, abused, and you know, the whole nine yards. The big difference here was the way that the actors would play off of your reactions. Many visitors of Stag have stated that the actors are what made it such a great experience. One person explained that an actress made him smitten, going gaga for her, and then the next second, she was commanding him to do unspeakable acts that most of you know all too well of now. Much like the other entries, you are required to enter the experience alone, but it only lasted 30 minutes. Most would describe what goes on here as extreme theater meets haunted house attraction. Much like that of the Zombie Joe's underground theater entry, only now the actors would get very, very touchy with you. The reason this one is lower on the list is because it is said to be much, much more intense than the other ones. I mean, just take a look at this specific scene. While some of the experience kind of ease you into the entire thing, the moment you get upstairs to the event, they immediately put a bag over your head and drag you into the main room to begin the experience. Although it's one of the shorter ones on the list, it is definitely one of the more intense. The Victim Experience The Victim Experience was a short-lived haunt that was done at the same location and company as the Gates of Hell. The Freakling Brothers introduced this new experience in 2013 and marketed it as an experience for extreme thrill seekers. The full experience though was basically the Gates of Hell, but a more intense and uncensored version. Think of Gates of Hell as the R-rated version and the victim experience as the NC-17 version. No matter what your personal fears or taboos, they will find something to shock or trigger you just by design of the haunt. 
It is said to be so intense that it's not uncommon for you to have cuts and bruises after the event as well as mental damage. This haunt would start off with a mandatory safety class where you and the group you will be going in with are given a rundown of the entire trip. Before entering the haunt, you are read your last rites with Pope Satanus and then you are brought into the gates of hell uncensored. When the haunt was active, only 8 people were permitted inside at any given time and tickets were upwards of $200. Some of the abuse in this one include your classic electric shocks but more extreme. So extreme in fact that people reported to have scorch marks left on their body that took weeks to heal. There was even simulated assault via getting adult toys shoved down your throat multiple times throughout the attraction. It was also not uncommon to leave with a black eye after the experience was over. You would get punched, suffocated, slapped, gagged, and just all around beat the fuck up. Not to mention they'd make you strip and eat unwanted items. There was a safe word for this one thankfully, but man, there's just so much more intense behavior with this one than there was on the previous entries. People believe that this is the second most intensive experience you could have done, but unfortunately, it was closed down unofficially. I say unofficially because there was no announcement that it was closed, but the victim experience did not appear in 2018 or 2019, so I think it's safe to say that this one may not be coming back, at least for a while. Miasma Miasma is one more step down the descent into madness with this list because of how extreme the haunt truly is. Like the haunts down further, this one is invites only. When this haunt came onto the scene, many questioned its validity as an actual haunt as the entire thing seemed pretty sketch. You are given instructions on where to meet and at what time, but are also told to not share the location of where you are going with anyone. You are also instructed to show up alone and the time slots can vary between 9pm and even midnight. This is where we take a step away from jump scares, classic horror mazes in terms of guiding you through a bunch of rooms with different events happening, and instead is literally a psychological and physical torture experience. Going to this event, you will be touched, restrained, blindfolded, and smeared with blood and other fluids. Although they have a safe word for those who can't handle it, the graphic, sexual, and violent nature of this event is enough to deter victims of sexual abuse and assault, along with many others that do not wish to experience these types of situations. From what I've been able to gather from tons of testimonials online, Miasma seeks to change people's view on life itself, wanting people to question their existence and why they'd put themselves through such an experience. Miasma itself is also just the company name as each year they put on a different haunt. One year it was called Miasma Homecoming, while another year it was simply called Into Great Silence. These experiences are just that, experiences. Not just haunts, but life lessons that are meant to stick with you after the entire ordeal is done and over with. This is absolutely one of the most brutal, but lacks in one section which is time. The entire experience from what I've read online is at most 30 minutes long, not too bad honestly, but just 30 minutes of basically torture and you are out of there. The takeaway for this entry is that this haunt is meant to feel real. The situations that the actors and company pull off are meant to make you feel as if you are actually in danger and might die. There aren't too many testimonials online, but one that I did read explained that they were brought inside and given a fake gun. Well, at the time they didn't know if it was fake or not, but it's honestly very clear that it was a fake gun. But anyways, an actor gave the man a gun and then this man was told to walk into a warehouse with the actor and rob these two other people. The guest walked in with the actor and was then told to shoot the two other actors that were in the warehouse and take their money. The actor with the gun would take the initiative and beat up the two other actors and then told the guest to keep them at gunpoint. This would then lead to the actor with the gun leaving the room. Once he left the room though, the real experience started. The ones that were being held at gunpoint by the original guest that booked the experience got up and jumped the guest. They pinned him down and then began taking him through the entire experience. These are the types of situations that this room will put you through and it's honestly very intense. Some have expressed that they didn't know what was real and what wasn't by the end of it and when they got out they just had an appreciation for life. The lengths that they go to achieve these effects are pretty wild. 
from making you assault people yourself to being the one getting assaulted, it seems as though Miasma knows no boundaries. Thankfully, as said before, there is a safe word, but those who make it through always seem to be changed by the experience in a positive manner. Catharsis Everything that you know about the masochistic haunts, catharsis takes just that much further. I believe that this entry is referring to the catharsis event that took place in 2016 in Orlando, Florida. This was a one-time event that happened for 13 nights during October of 2016 and had well over a thousand attendees. Some interesting points to note about this one, you were given a guest book to sign that required you to write down what sins tempt you the most. Referring of course to the seven deadly sins. After writing down what sims you were tempted by, you were then brought to a pretty nice bar area that was called the Deadly Sins Bar. This was a comfortable, lively, but sexy lounge area, featuring cocktails, burlesque entertainment, and more. After some time, guests were summoned by the bar owner named Selena Blackwood, where she would send everyone on their merry way to start the 30 minute haunt, and well, this haunt was pretty extreme. Now before I get into the details of the haunt, there was an important detail to note about the waiting area which was the bar. You could seemingly spend as much time as you wanted here, just kicking back and buying some drinks or getting some food, you could basically do whatever you wanted in this bar area, but once you went into the haunt itself, you were not allowed to go back to the bar area. Now as for the haunt, you had such things as hot wax being poured on you, to smearing blood on your face, whips, chains, and just everything else in between. This is described by many to not be your classic haunt with scares, but rather simulated torture and all around just a very sensual, erotic, and overall chaotic experience. The theme behind this haunt is the seven deadly sins, with some attendees explaining that the actors themselves are meant to portray the sins, but who knows how true that actually is. There does seem to be a deeper meaning behind the haunt though. You are to make a choice during the middle of the experience whether you want to go down the path of salvation or the path of sin. However, choosing either one gets you into the same exact experience. The thought process here is that both sin and salvation are found on the same exact road in life. Now I'm pretty sure that this haunt isn't around anymore. It appears as though this one only happened the one time during 2016 and I say this because there is not really much information out there on the attraction. With that said, let's move on to layer 8. Layer 8 is just one single attraction, so instead of introducing it, let's just get right into it. McKamey Manor Oh boy, McKamey Manor. Located in San Diego, California is one of the most infamous haunted house attractions out there. There have been tons upon tons of videos that talk about the unspeakable things that happen at this location. From people getting their hair cut off, to bugs being shoved down their throat, being beat up, blood poured on them, straight up drowning them, you name it. All the while, the owner, Russ McKamey, films the entire process and throws it up on YouTube. You might be wondering, why the hell would anyone want to go through this? Well, there is an incentive. The owner, Russ, claims that anyone that can finish the entire experience, which is said to last over seven hours, will be granted a total of $20,000 for their troubles. Even weirder than that is the way that you pay. It's basically free as the only payment that they ask for is a bag of dog food. Now I'm going to try and explain the entire process of signing up, to getting waivers legalized, to actually going into McKamey Manor. So ideally you'd get into contact with the owner Russ by reaching out through the website. Once he screens you over the phone and decides that you are a good candidate for the haunt, he will usually send someone to pick you up and take you to some undisclosed location to fill out the waiver, which by the way, is 40 pages long. It's here at the waiver stage that some of the crazy shit will actually start to happen. Some of the footage that is still on YouTube is honestly hard to watch. I know these people are still alive and they made it out just fine, but Jesus Christ man, like. Just look at how they're treated when they are trying to just sign the forms. It's also very predatory the way that the entire process is done. I believe Russ gets people that are very submissive on purpose so that they will do whatever he says. The way he talks and treats the guests is just very off-putting. One second he's super kind and caring and then the next he's telling his men to tape your hair and bang your head everywhere. The entire thing just strikes me as off. 
This is where people have begun theorizing about what's really going on inside McKamey Manor. People believe that the owner Russ is a complete psychopath, pedophile, and overall just a mentally ill person. He's even gone on record stating that he keeps the worst parts of the haunt top secret and has even admitted to using MK Ultra tactics on his victims to keep them coming back to the haunt. MK Ultra, for those unaware, is a real event that took place in which the US government did a bunch of horrible psychological and physical experiments on humans just to see what would happen. The way this was done was by basically pumping people full of LSD in an attempt to brainwash them just to see if they could. It's said that the tactics used in MK Ultra are the same tactics Russ uses on his victims. It's claimed that the stuff that Russ is feeding people in these videos contain hallucinogens and then he attempts to hypnotize the victim and brainwash them into liking the experience. This gets even more believable when you realize that Russ used to be in the Navy and has experience with those torture methods. Aside from this theory, there is another that claims everything in McKinney Manor is faked. This is mostly due to the number of exaggerated claims that have been made by the owner. On the website, it used to say that the waitlist was over 10,000 people long and that it was the most popular haunt in San Diego. Whether this was true or not has never been actually confirmed, which is really weird because you think a claim like that would be very easy to prove, but it's not. Another thing that rubs people the wrong way is that some of the videos are clearly fake. Take this tooth extraction clip. They are trying to convince me that they actually pulled this guy's teeth out, but you can see the teeth in the guy's hands before he even starts pulling making it very clear that these are prop teeth. Also, the noises that this wrench make against the teeth sound like it's made of that cheap plastic that props are made of. It's also important to note that although some people get their heads shaved, there are instances such as this one where you can clearly see the razor going through their hair, but nothing is getting cut off. Pretty weird, but I'm not going to sit here and believe that this isn't real because you can watch the two hour video yourself. There are like tons upon tons of videos on the actual McKamey Manor YouTube channel that show all of the crazy and masochistic things that they do to people during this experience. So even if some things are exaggerated here and there like the tooth extraction, it doesn't take away that these people are basically being tortured for three hours straight. Thankfully, this haunt is no longer around, as McKinney Manor actually ended up moving to Tennessee due to some legal action from the state of California. As of late though, the whole thing seems to have blown over. There have been a few instances where the manor got the limelight again, such as when their waiver was leaked online, which after careful examination, proved to not be that legal of a waiver after all. If anyone has any more information regarding McKinney Manor, I'd love to go more in depth on it because Holy hell man, this place is just freaking nuts. If you guys want to watch some of the clips yourself and watch the entire tours that people have gone on at this place, I will leave a link to the McKamey Manor channel as there are tons of videos that actually show the full like two hour tours that people go on at this place. Definitely the worst possible experience you can have with one of these attractions. And honestly, I'm glad that it's nowhere near where I live because man, it's just such a freaking weird experience that someone actually went out and made this. If you made it here, then congrats because that is the end of today's video. If you are feeling a bit scared after watching this video or just need something to take your mind off of these attractions, I urge you guys to go check out my two friends comedy gaming channels. You can find the link to both of these channels in the description below. If you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss another upload. With all of that said, I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.